Every salesperson knows how important it is to spend time with their customers and prospects. But did you know that the average salesperson only spends about 33% of their time talking with their customers and prospects? How you use that time determines whether you'll beat your quota or your quota beats you. In this Training Tuesday video, I'm going to show you how to deliver the perfect pitch to maximize your time in front of your customers and ultimately to close more deals. In the first video of this three-part series on how to master a sales call, we covered how to prepare for a sales call. You can watch that right here. In this video, we're going to cover getting yourself in the right headspace, setting the tone for the demo, giving the demo, and delivering the finale of your performance, the close. The first thing that we're going to cover is getting yourself in the right headspace or mindset to give a really great demo. The mindset for selling is that you are not selling. You're communicating value to your prospect or customer about a product that you really believe is going to help them and make their lives better. If you approach your demo from that mindset and that headspace, it'll go a lot better and come across much more authentically. Imagine yourself going on just the best vacation in the world. It would, maybe it was a trip to Hawaii and you want to tell your friend from work, you want to communicate to them how awesome this trip was, what a wonderful experience it was. Because you want them to go on it because you care about them and you want them to have a similar experience. Imagine how you would talk about that vacation. The, the tone in your voice when you're telling a story like that that you really believe in is so authentic and it's, it, you're, it makes you communicate in a different way. And when you're selling your product or service, it's similar, right? Like you know how valuable it is that and you, you've seen a hundred other customers that you sold it to benefit and, and get the value from the product or service that you sell. And that's kind of the position that you're coming from. Now we're gonna do part two, setting the tone for the demo. Be confident. It's okay to be nervous. There's, a, I forget who said this. There's a great, there's a great saying, be brave, even if you're not, just pretend to be, because no one can tell the difference anyway. Communicating with confidence starts from the very moment you start talking with someone. Imagine that you meet me and I say, hi, I'm Steve Benson and today I'd like to talk about, did you hear I said that? It's almost like there's a question mark after my last name. I was asking permission to, to introduce myself. Compare that to, hi, I'm Steve Benson. Today I'm going to talk about what I'm doing is I'm using a downward inflection in the tone and I'm using pauses to communicate that confidence. Reassure your audience that you're an expert, you know what you're talking about, you're confident, and they can be reassured that they're in good hands. The next thing we're going to talk about is the pre-presentation which is your chance to listen before you start presenting the product. There's an opportunity in the conversation with your, with your prospect to figure out why are they talking to you? And the absolute most important thing that you do during this part of your sales call is find out what is the pain that they're hoping to solve by talking to you. Once you learn what's most important to them and what their, what their pain is, then you can tailor your whole demo and map it to what they're actually looking for. You can learn what the dinosaur feature is. More, more on what the dinosaur feature is in a second. When you're in a sales call, make it a conversation. Have a conversation with your customer. Remember, you have two ears and one mouth and use them in proportion. People don't buy features. They buy solutions, trust, and relationships. The next thing I want to talk about is I want to connect the dots between your features, the benefits of those features, and the business value that your prospect or customer gets out of the thing that you're talking about. A lot of reps are really good at talking about their features, and that's kind of where they get stuck. The step after that is to get them to understand, our product does blank. That's the feature, which allows you to do blank. That's the benefit. And that means blank in terms of real business value. And getting them to see and believe that value chain and connect those dots is really what you're doing in a sale. 
because if they believe they're going to get this business value and it's worth this much to them and that is that's worth way more than what the thing costs then this is a no-brainer decision for them and and you'll get action out of them you've got to help them see through that whole that whole connection. I mean, how, how would I do this in my life? I can give you an example right now. As many of you know, uh, my day job is that I'm CEO of Badger Maps. We make a, an app for field salespeople. The thing that we do is, is we optimize a field salesperson's route when they're in the field and help them build a schedule. So you know, the feature I would say, the Badger Map has the ability to optimize your route and help you build a schedule for, for your day. So the, the benefit is, they save time in the planning, and when they're now that they're driving a better route, they end up driving fewer miles and seeing more customers. So, what is the business value of that? I would ask the prospect, "What is your sales rep's time really worth? And how much more would your sales rep sell with two more meetings every single day?" If that's worth, if that business value is worth a lot more than the product that you're selling, then half of your sales job is done. Yeah, I've gotten feedback from you guys that you, you like when I do these, uh, these kind of back and forth dialogues with myself. And so I'll do one of those uh, right now. So I'll, we'll, we'll walk through how to show, how to get your customer to nod their head and say, yes, I agree. This is the business value and I see this ROI and it's greater than the cost. And so obviously I should do that. Once again, I'll be both the sales rep and the customer. <laughs> so I, I really need another actor or something. I don't know. So as a sales rep, I would say, so Mr. Customer, currently your company is losing out on sales opportunities because reps aren't able to spend their time as effectively as they could when they're out in the field. Reps end up zigzagging around town. It sounds like you're losing out on a lot of potential deals, huh? And the prospect says, well, that's, that's right. That's why we're looking at your system right now. And I say, okay, well, if you could make a guess, how many meetings per rep per week could you get if your reps were able to spend their time more effectively? How much revenue do you think that, that that many meetings a month would drive in your business? The prospect would say, well, you know, I haven't really run the math on this, but I think I'd say, well, let me think, about $5,000 per rep per month. Right? Okay. Wow. $60,000 per rep and you got 25 reps, that's $1.5 million in, in lost deals every year. Okay, well, I'll show you how we can be doing this with Badger so that your, your reps will be able to get those extra two meetings a day and make those extra sales. So you see what we just did there? By asking questions and getting the actual numbers out of the, out of the, the prospect, we've been able to show that, and they're his numbers, right? He, he said himself, I will be making $1.5 million more a year if I were to use your solution. And that, that's how you can move a deal way down the line in terms of making a sale. Well, now we're going to start part three of the video, and that is how to do the demo, the dinosaur feature. So what is the dinosaur feature? So think about the movie Jurassic Park. Did you show up on the boat and they put you in this little Jeep? And did they take you right to the lab or you got to see some egg? No, you got onto your Jeep and they drove you over to see a dinosaur. That's the first thing they do to you. Why do they do that? Because that's what's the best part. They, they wowed you, they blew your mind. And now when they show you the egg, all that's really interesting because you just saw a dinosaur and you're like a 12 year old. Granted later the dinosaurs eat you, that's beside the point. We're not talking about that movie right now. We're talking about how to demo things. So what is your dinosaur feature? Here's the trick, right? It's not the same thing every time. In the pre-call, when you're talking with them, you're feeling out what's most important to them. And so you have to figure out what, what is their pain really and, and which one of my features really are gonna map to that. A, a, a sales demo is not a book and it's not a movie. You can give away the ending. You can give away the best part right in the beginning. Right off the bat, show them the dinosaur. Now I'm gonna say something a little crazy. I would like you to think about not presenting the product when you're giving a presentation. Well, during a sales call, you should only be presenting the product about 25% of the time. The rest of the time should be spent selling. And when I say selling, I mean showing them how they can achieve those results. Get them to describe a specific problem that they would like to solve. How do you do that? Well, you say, well, to step back for a second, Mr. Customer, why did you agree to this meeting? What's, what's the problem that you would like to fix here? And, and 
get them to actually express to you what the pain is that they're trying to solve. Verify with them that you understand them and map your product to those business goals. And that's what I mean by selling. And, and that brings me to the next point. Don't make assumptions. If, you, if you're not sure you understand a question they had, clarify. You don't want to make an assumption and kind of go in the wrong direction. Like if you don't totally understand, you can say, so what you're saying is, and you can repeat what they just said. And if they're like, no, 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 what I mean is this, then you've just uncovered something. So don't make assumptions. Another point, another thought is, a presentation is not a training session. A rookie salesperson might spend too much time in the weeds of how exactly their product works, what the features are, how to use those features, et cetera, et cetera. And they don't spend enough time on the value that these features are creating for the organization, for, for, the, for the prospect. They're, after they purchase and become a customer, there's plenty of time to, to teach them how to, how to use the product. Now is not that time. Now is the time to get them to buy it in the first place. And the final thing I want to talk about is how to have your sales deck at your fingertips and how to use it in a conversational way. You see a lot of salespeople, they'll just go through their whole deck, click, 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 and they'll, they'll do it very straight, and it's them speaking for 15 minutes. And it tends to kill the conversation. So what I encourage people do, to do is have their sales deck, but don't just go through. Make it a conversation. You know what's in there, and so you can kind of get them talking about things. You can jump around slides, be like, oh, I actually have a slide about that, and jump to it. You can refer to it, you can use it as a communication tool, but you're not stuck just going through it slide by slide. And you can you can always flash through the whole deck, like towards the end of the conversation. You can be like, oh, well, let's let's check the deck really quick just to make sure that I got everything. And you can start flashing through and be like, oh, we covered everything here. We, we talked about ABC. Oh, we didn't talk about one, two, three. I'm not sure if this is interesting to you, but just so you, just so you know, one, two, three. The whole conversation can be much more uh, organic and it feels customized, it feels like you're being consultative. That's how you can use your sales deck in, in a way that is much more effective. A great thing to ask is, Mr. Customer, on, on a scale of one to 10, how much of what you wanted to cover have we covered? By asking that question, you elicit if there was more things that they wanted out of you. That, that, that's a really great little line to just slide in there 75% of the way or so through the, through the call, it, you still have enough time to cover an additional thing that they wanted to cover that you didn't cover. Well, this brings us to part four. Uh, this is the close, the finale of your performance. So the first thing that I wanna talk about with respect to closing is anticipating objections. And this is something that you do throughout the entire sales process, but if you've done it right, if you've anticipated objections and handled those objections as they've, as they've come up and overcame those objections, then the close becomes a lot easier. You don't wait for them, the prospect, to raise an objection. You bring up the objection proactively. In this way, you remain in control of it and how it's positioned and how it's dealt with. If you don't do this and you have to, you have to deal with an objection that they raise, then you oftentimes end up sounding defensive. It's an objection you know is gonna get brought up. You should bring it up first. This also makes you makes them feel like you're really in tune with what they're thinking. They're thinking, oh yeah, well, I, I was I was actually gonna ask that anyway. And let's do a little run through. Well, and Mr. Prospect, you'll notice that our price is, is higher than some of our competitors here, and, and that's really because of its quality and its effectiveness. Uh, well, let me show you how it's it's got a higher quality and more effectiveness. So do you see what happened right there? Like we we brought up we, we brought up that the price was higher, gave the reason, and you showed him why. He had that question in the back of his or her mind anyway, and you've just checked it off. And another thought along this kind of path here is don't be afraid of saying no. Uh, if, if a prospect or customer asks you to do something that your, your product or your service just really doesn't do or doesn't do that well, uh, you should say no and you shouldn't be afraid to say no. It, it really builds credibility with the prospect of the customer. They'll, they'll say, oh, does it do this? And you're like, no, um, you know, but you know, Mr. Customer, we, we hear that a lot from our current customers, but unfortunately that's, a, that's an area where we have some work to do. And um, I, I can find out where that is on the roadmap and I can, I can talk to someone on the product management team and, and then I can get back to you in, in X, Y, Z amount of time. And, and that you've built credibility that's the kind of person that people want to do business with. So the next thing with closing is how to create urgency. The way you do this is you need to show why not taking action is going to be 
super detrimental to the prospect. You know, for, for me, for example, people have been doing field sales for thousands of years. People have been in field sales. They've never had a mapping and routing solution on their phone. That's That wasn't a thing. Granted, this is a really cool thing that they could have now, but they could also just do nothing and keep doing things the same way they're doing. And that's, that might be the case with your product as well. So how do you how do you get them to actually do something? You have to bring the fact that they're in pain to their attention. And they may not know that they're, that they're in pain. Um, a great trick to doing this is showing them another customer who was in a similar situation. And you can show them how that other person solved their problem. Case studies are really useful for this. Um, testimonials are really useful, useful for this. And if they think, I'm like this person, then it makes it something that they are more likely to do because they can envision themselves getting those same benefits. And a key part of closing is to finish by agreeing on what the next steps are. You need to have a plan and understand in your own mind, where is this prospect in the sales cycle and what do we need to progress to the next stages of the sales cycle? Uh, you you got to leave five minutes to really cover what are we going to do next letting them think about it and then get back to you is not a next step, right? You, you need something concrete. So in my world, it sounds like, well, Mr. Customer, so in terms of next steps, I'm gonna get approval for a three week trial for your 10 person trial team and you are gonna send me over the territory data. When do you think that you, you're gonna have access to that information? So those are the key takeaways. Thanks for joining me for Training Tuesdays. It'd be great if you would like, comment, subscribe below. Um, and if you'd like to check out the first video in this series, uh, it's a three-part series right here. Just see the links below in the description if you'd like to get access to all the field sales training videos that we've ever made. Happy selling.